Today's discussion, we're going to look at a few tips on some simple ways you and your organization can ignite inclusion in the workplace. Diversity and inclusion go hand in hand, and you can't have one without the other. But sometimes organizations put more emphasis on diversity and forget about inclusion. It's easy to think that inclusion will just, ha just happen, but it's not that simple. You have to work to create it. So let's look at some tips. The first one here is to teach others what inclusivity means. Some employees might be unfamiliar with what the true meaning of inclusivity and how unsure uh, and, are, and, and are probably unsure of how to practice it in the workplace. So what you need to do is make sure that you educate your team members on what inclusivity is and how to use it. Meet with your human resource team and see if they can set up regular training or education programs to teach both managers and employees what inclusivity means. These trainings can be interactive, they can be engaging activities that explore ways to show appreciation, gratitude and acceptance for each other and employees in the workplace. Inclusivity can be much easier to practice when all organizational members clearly understand what it means and what it looks like. The next tip is to celebrate and embrace your team members and their differences. Many employees come from a variety of backgrounds where they celebrate all different kinds of traditions. You and your team members should accept and celebrate employees' differences. There are many ways that you can show acceptance of differences in the workplace. Some of them includes asking your HR team to set a zero tolerance policy that require employees to accept all employees and avoid any acts of discrimination. Speak up or report any situations where employees don't feel included or welcomed by others. Use accepting and inclusive terminology like partner or spouse when talking about employees' significant others. Think about employees' dietary restrictions due to their religious um, or physical health needs when purchasing snacks, ordering lunches, or bringing in treats for them. Increase accessibility of your hallways, entranceways, and office areas to cater for employees with disabilities. Throw parties celebrating holidays of all religions for employees that come from various different backgrounds and cultures. Offer up meeting areas to new mothers um, to give them a space to, you know, breastfeed and, you know, take care of their babies. And then refer to employees by their preferred nouns. So, you know, these are some ways that you can celebrate and embrace your team members' differences. Another tip that is really great is to talk about something other than work. So wherever you get an opportunity for you and your colleagues to learn more about each other uh, as people, as individuals, and to share and to listen to each other's stories is a great way to create and foster empathy in the workplace. Small things like starting up a conversation in the kit, in, you know, in the staff kitchen or doing a daily newspaper quiz with your team will help relax the environment and get people talking. You know, you could talk about going to the movies. What was the latest movies that you saw? You never know. You might share common interest. You know, you've got people that are raving Star Wars fans and then, you know, fans of, let's say, Jason Statham as an example. You can also talk about sports and hobbies. And there's very common similar, uh, you know, similarities between different people of different uh, uh, backgrounds and they might share various different hobbies and sports. It doesn't matter. It could range across uh, ages, genders, and so on. As an example, uh, one of my workplaces, I was one of the younger people and I enjoyed playing golf. And then there were some of the older um, staff members, very much more senior to myself, and they enjoy playing golf. So we had that commonality between us. Another tip, and that is to change up the time of company events. So having, having company events after work might exclude certain groups of people, especially, you know, part of your workforce that has families that they got to get home to, um, various different uh, events as well. So say, for example, I know some, some sort of, uh, some religions have early morning prayers. So, you know, if you have early sessions in the morning, it might be difficult for them to get to. 
So what you want to do is you want to try and schedule events, both maybe corporate and social events, you know, at lunchtime during business hours. This gives everyone an opportunity to attend and means the same people aren't missing out every time. You know, so sometimes you might want to arrange a, a weekend uh, team building activity, but then, you know, you've got some staff members that have families and they, they have kids that they may need to take to their kids sporting activities on the weekend as well. So these kind of things uh, is what needs to be adjusted. So sometimes it's hard for you to always schedule things during biz- business hours, but what you might be able to do is plan ahead, speak to your staff member, find out about what they have going on in their lives after work and, you know, weekends, and then maybe schedule a time where they can plan ahead for this event. And that way, it's not something that just, you know, is on the spur of a moment and, you know, they, they need to jump and, and be ready for, for this work activity. But if it's planned ahead, they can, you know, make arrangements, maybe have another family member take the kids there or maybe arrange that that week the kids might not, not attend the event. That way they can be included. So this is certainly, you know, a way of, creating that inclusivity in the workplace. More voices means more ideas, right? Make sure everyone's viewpoint and not just the leadership team um, is being represented at, you know, the decision-making table. Proposing an idea to staff and colleagues and then asking them all to provide some form of feedback is a great way to do this. And just keep it up. Continue to get regular input from everyone in your organization. Of course, we don't mean to do this with small minor things, but do do it when it comes to decisions that affects everyone or where broader perspectives could be beneficial. Give everyone a voice. When you do so, they feel that their opinions, their ideas are valued and that makes them feel included and part of the business and part of the team. Switch up the chairperson or mix up meetings. This is a great tip, great idea, right? If you're running regular meetings, consider switching out who the the chairperson, the facilitator, the person running the meeting is every time and give everybody an opportunity to manage the agenda. So this not only makes the meetings more interesting and engaging, but it gives people the opportunity to lead also, you know, and, and it ensures that those that don't regularly speak up in the meetings get a chance to have their say. You never know. That really quiet one that really keeps to themselves might be great at running meetings and they, you know, relish the opportunity of leading and uh, having, um, you know, everyone following the agenda that they may have uh, set up for that week. You just never know who might come out of their shells. And also, you know, it, it, it really does promote uh, that inclusivity and uh, collaboration, everyone feeling that they contributing to the team. So mix up your meetings whenever you get a chance. Cater for both introverts and ext- extroverts. So you know, remember that not everyone will feel comfortable in the same environment. And so add some variety to your meetings. For example, instead of giving a presentation and asking for uh, on the spot feedback or directing questions um, at a particular person, Consider pre-sending um, an overview of your presentation and, gi- and give people the opportunity um, to supply questions ahead of time via an email or via memo for the meeting. So that way they can think about the things and they can prepare that um, beforehand. And that way they're not f- they don't feel like they've been just put on the spot if you reach out and, and ask them a question based on that. So send them sort of an overview and then give them the opportunity to send their questions ahead of time. You, that is even great for, for you as a leader because you can identify where people have issues or questions or they, they, they don't understand things. You can tweak your message and tweak your presentation a little bit more. And then certainly, you know, when the, when the time comes and you, you raise those points up, don't pinpoint that particular person, but you can say, look, we received some of the feedback and comments from, from the group. These are some of the questions that was asked. That is a great way as well for especially people that are introverts and don't like to be put on the spot for their, you know, their, their opinions, their questions, their ideas to be presented to, to the group. We all know that extroverts will just jump out and, you know, they're the life of the party for some, you know, in some instances, but, you know, and, and they'll speak their mind. But sometimes you've got to cater for, you know, the introverts in the, in the team as well. Um, the second last tip that I have for you, and that is, Avoid making assumptions. Now, it's human nature 
to stereotype people making assumptions. But, you know, I, I, I want you to focus on, you know, um, uh, curbing that desire and that um, need to make an assumption. Assumptions can really damage your capacity to relate to others. And, you know, it, it, it really stereotypes people and can cause major problems in, you know, your working relationships with your, your colleagues and, and your management and everyone, you know, even customers sometimes. So if you assume, you know, um, if you assume you know how others think and feel or who they are and how they live, you stop listening and communicating. And this le leads to you, uh, you know, leads to major misunderstandings. So, you know, don't stereotype people. Don't make assumptions about them. Um, listen to them, ask them for feedback, ask them for question, communicate openly with them. And then very lastly, the last tip that I have is express your appreciation for team members. And I've added two points in there. Make sure you do so with honesty and integrity. You create a more positive and encouraging environment if you actively work to make others feel accepted and valued. Um, if your team members helps you solve a problem or collaborates closely with you on a successful project, make sure that you express your appreciation and your gratitude for their help. It's just simple words like, thank you so much for taking the time to find, you know, those previous budget reports or teaching me how to use, you know, the accounting system. I really do appreciate it. You know, this helps employees feel valued and it encourages them to assist one another on projects and, you know, other collaborative um, uh, uh, efforts in the future. You know, when a team member sees that you um, sees you acting in this way to others, they'll also feel motivated. So if you do this for one person, someone else will see that and say they'll they'll be motivated to do the same, you know, and it builds a positive, enjoyable and a collaborative um, environment. So, you know, there you have it. There's some of the tips that I have that can ignite inclusivity in, in the workplace. If you think you and your organization could do better when it comes to inclusivity in the workplace, then feel free to reach out to me. You can schedule a clarity call. Go to my website, mohammedsaid.com.au, and I have a link there that allows you to book a time. And we could have a free discussion around what you and your organization can do to increase and ignite inclusivity in your workplace.